it's just an honor to be able to share with you today, and so I'm, I'm thankful uh, for Tim and the elders and their leadership and this opportunity. And um, as Tim said, we're drawing near to Easter, and as we're doing that, we're coming back to our sermon series called "Come See and Believe." As we walk through the last days that Jesus was here on Earth um, before he, before He died. Um, and so when I was thinking about the best way to remind us of uh, what has already transpired since it has been several months since we've looked at this, uh, I decided we're going to read John 1 through 17. So go ahead and uh, open up to uh, John 1. Just kidding. That would be fun, though. <laughs> but instead, uh, something that I think will help us is I want to look at the seven I am statements of Christ. And so uh, this, is, this is what we see here. He says, uh, I am the bread of life. And that's John 6.35. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. I am the gate, uh, John 10, 9. Uh, I am the good shepherd, John 10, 11. I am the resurrection and the life, John 11, 25. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John uh, 14, 6. And I am the vine, John 15, 5. And, and so I want us to have those in our mind as we look at chapter 18. So if you guys will uh, go ahead and, and turn to chapter 18, that would be great. And I will have it up on the screen. And so just a little bit uh, more of some context here, just as we're drawing in and we're remembering. Um, in John 11 and 12, you have Jesus, and he raises Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and then we have his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And that's what's called Palm Sunday. And followed by that is a long section of teachings from chapters 13 through 17, um, which is called the Upper Room Discourse. And uh, this is where Jesus teaches his disciple, and they share the Passover meal. And then the section, that, that section is just full of powerful truths and promises, and it concludes at the end of 17. And we're going to pick up in chapter 18 as soon as Jesus finishes his prayer. And so, uh, John 18, if you guys will, uh, you can follow along or you can read with me. Um, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook of Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Judas often met there with his disciples. Or excuse me, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And then Jesus, knowing all that would happen, came to him, came forward to them and said, Whom do you seek? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and they fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, uh, I told you that I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have not lost one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it out and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? Um, we see here in this first section here that uh, this betrayal by Judas is actually a really pivotal point in the story. Um, Christ, this is so cool, Christ like Adam, in, or excuse me, Christ did not hide like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, if you think about this. Instead, uh, he met these accusers head on. Um, he could have vanished in their midst. We saw that earlier in the scriptures where Jesus is, the crowd's coming upon him and he just vanishes and walks away. Or he could have allowed Peter uh, to maybe rally the other disciples and to keep fighting while Jesus escaped, but he doesn't do that. Um, he confronts them and he asks them a very, very, very revealing question. Whom do you seek? And they reply, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, and then Christ responds with, I am. Now, in, in your Bible, and even on the screen, it's translated, I am he, but that's just to help us English folk. The actual literal translation is he's just saying, I am. Um, and so, like, immediately when you hear the words, I am, that should make you think back to the Old Testament. Uh, I am, that's the name that God uh, gave to Moses and the people of Israel. And it should also make you think back to the I am statements in John that we just reviewed. And so, um, right here in this section, we, already meet, we need to decide if this testimony of Christ is true. Is he really I am? Like, is he really God? So let's uh, continue, continue reading. 
There's a Jesus' true testimony, saying that I am. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and they bound him. And first they led him to Ananias, for he was the father of, of Caphaeus, um, who was a high priest. And it was Caphaeus who advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Um, so we see here that Jesus is now arrested and they're taking him to before the high priest. And what is so crazy is that this high priest, Caphaeus, he testified earlier in John eleven forty nine through 52. Um, and this is what he said. But one of them, Caphaeus, who was the high priest, said, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this on his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but also for those who are gathered, uh, gathered into the children of God, who are scattered abroad. Um, we're actually going to see this prophecy being more fulfilled over the next two weeks as we look at this, as, as we finish off the book of Jod. But we're just going to see, ultimately, that it adds further evidence to Christ's claim that I am. Let's keep reading. Um, Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant at the girl said to Peter, You are also not one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. It's funny, I am not, I am, get it? Uh, now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold. And they were standing and warming themselves. And Peter was, was with them, standing and warming himself. Uh, we see here that Peter... I swipe. Ah, cool. We see here that Peter bears false witness. This is a false testimony about Peter. Uh, I am not. But, you know, maybe he was being serious. I mean, the Christ that he was following, this guy saying that he was a good king, um, would he really be led away, arrested, and now being abused and mocked and torn? Maybe Peter didn't really know or understand who he was truly following. Uh, and for that, I want us to stop for a moment and just to think. Um, it's easy for us to be hard on Peter in this moment, especially in Scripture. We love to flesh this out. Um, but have you ever denied Christ? Maybe not like Peter did, like in the face of being arrested and stuff like that. Uh, Maybe not like our brothers and sisters overseas. I am in. You should check that out. Um, but maybe you've denied him with your actions while with your words that you're proclaiming him. Or uh, maybe you denied him because you don't really fully understand the gospel and what it means to follow him. And so I would challenge us all that we've all been like Peter at one point or another in our lives. Uh, this really makes me think back to just part of my testimony at a teammate. Uh, who heard of some things that I was doing, and I was proclaiming that I was a Christian, but with my actions, I was not. And he straight up said to me, and he was an atheist, and he said, I thought Christians didn't do that. Ugh. Yeah, he was right. They, they don't. Uh, I wasn't a Christian. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, we're going to carry on with this story. And there's Peter's false testimony, I am not. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. And Jesus answered them, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do, you, why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard what I said to them. They know what I said. Um, when he had said these things, one of the officers standing by Jesus struck Jesus with his hand. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? And I then sent him bound to Calpheus, the high priest. Um, it's crazy. We see Christ. Um, sorry. We see Christ uh, here. He is uh, being abused because of his true testimony, because he's claiming something. And then they're asking him to testify of it. And he's like, I've already told you guys. I've spoken it openly. Um, 
And when I was reading through this and studying, I had a thought, what if Peter would have said, I am, to the servant girl? Would the servant of girl brought, him, brought Peter before the high priest and then ask Peter, like, hey, is what this guy says is true or not? Just think about it. Maybe the girl wanted to actually know about Christ and wasn't necessarily, uh, didn't like the high priest. We don't know. But I do, I do think it's interesting that what if Peter would have said, I am, and would have been a witness there in that moment? Uh, would they have called on him to testify on Christ's behalf here? I'm not for sure. Um, let's read on verse 25 now Simon Peter was standing and warming, warming himself and they said to him you are also not one of his disciples are you he denied it and said I am not one of the servants of the high priest a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off asked did I not see you in the garden with him and Peter again he denied it and at once a rooster crowed um We see here that Peter repeats this false testimony two more times. And when things repeat themselves in Scripture, it's important to take note. Um, he did. He had the option of telling the truth, uh, to testify to them about Christ claiming to be I am. As he did whenever Jesus, if you think about earlier, Jesus asked him, like, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, like, Peter gets it right then. Uh, so he knows, but... Uh, he, he denies it right here, and he says, like, you know what, I don't know. Um, but what's something that's really neat is right now we're reading through Acts in our reading plan. And uh, in it we see that Peter, and after the day of Pentecost, after Christ rises from the, the dead, he no longer doubts or denies Christ. Um, he, he lives it out fully because now he fully understands what the gospel is. Oh, right here. i am all got this all messed up, Tim. Can you guys go back to uh, verse 28, Devin? There we go. Thank you. All right, let's keep reading. Um, yeah. Then they led Jesus from the house of Calpheus to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning, and they themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So when Pilate outside said to them, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. And this was to fill the word that Jesus had spoken to show him by what kind of death he was going to die. Uh, we find here that the Jews have presented a false testimony to Pilate about Christ. All right? Um, and I think it's really easy to fall into being a false witness when you're so religious. Think about this. The Jews, they are more concerned with eating the Passover meal than to go into the house of a sinner. All right? They're trying to get rid of Jesus, but they're not willing to go into the house. They, they want to take part in this, but they're, they're not willing to engage the people that are unclean. Uh, they're wanting to be as exclusive as possible. And this guy named Jesus has to be put to, get, put to death for inviting other people into the kingdom. If you think about it, really for inviting us into the kingdom. They have their own personal agenda as their priority, and they just don't want to see the truth. Do you guys see the truth here? Once again, they, they want to celebrate God's passing over them from Exodus. Yet the very one whom God sent is being accused of being evil. The true Passover lamb is right there in front of them. I am. The true exodus from sin and slavery to sin. I am. The victory over death. I am. The person and the work of Jesus. I am. But they didn't want to see it. I know I am so quick to allow uh, my personal agenda and, and so quick to just get rid of the work that God is doing in my life. It's easier for me to say I am not than uh, rather to see and believe I am. You guys ever identified with that? We're going to see here now Jesus is going to testify his true testimony to Pilate. So Pilate entered his headquarters again. This is verse uh, 33. 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting, would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. Once again, we can see here that, that Jesus is actually revealing his true testimony to Pilate. He's, he's saying like, hey, I'm king. Um, Jesus goes back to one of his I am statements, that he is the truth. Uh, and it's crazy if you think about it. There's an indicator here of a person who is actually a true witness of Christ. They listen to him. Um, it's like with my kids. I love my kids. They're great. Uh, they know my voice. And like, they definitely know different tones of my voice, too. And uh, they listen to me the best that two little toddlers can. Um, but I think about it. Like, how could we ever do what he says to do or to be a witness for him if we don't listen to what he says? Um, many of us... We love to do this. My class loves, I teach a couple classes, they love to, this is good, I love it. Uh, they, they, they love to ask good questions, and I love to ask questions back to them. But uh, a, a question is this, is uh, what, what we like to do is we like to uh, reason with Christ, and we like to reason with his words. We like to take what he said and make it more modern, and we like to twist it so it fits our agenda. We like to take scripture and just, you know, manipulate it so that way it follows the channels that we really want it to follow. Um, <laughs> we're just like Pilate. Just like Pilate here, we ask just like he did, you know, what is truth? If you think about it, that's a very uh, postmodern or millennial thing to say. I was trying to ask some of the uh, Abide students, hey, what generation are you? They didn't even tell me. They're like, so it's a very generational X, Y, Z, whatever you guys are, like a very, a thing that we do today. Like, what is truth? You know, you do you, I do me, you know. Uh, but this is a huge question that we all have to figure out on our own today. Yet, just as Christ has said, he has spoken openly. He really has. He's given us his word, and he like, continually reveals himself through nature. I mean, just, it's such a gorgeous morning outside. Just so cool. Um, you know, we might even say that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Well, we sang that song earlier. How many of you guys sang that song? He is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, yet our lives, we're often living contrary to that truth. Uh, as soon as the first sign of anxiety or fear comes on us, we forget his word. Or when we're persecuted, we don't want to turn the other cheek. Who really wants to turn the other cheek? Or we're not generous, or we don't invite other people that don't look like us. Or like, hey, you know, I don't really know if I want to hang out with that person or have them in my home. I'm just going to stay away from that. Um, what about taking up the armor of God? What about remembering that we're at war right now? I would rather be a friend of the world and, and live at peace than actually believe that we're at war right now. Wouldn't you guys? Much easier. Uh, but when we do that, we actually make ourselves enemies of the truth. Once again, Jesus is a true testimony to Pilate that I am a king. I am the truth. I am. I am. I am. And Pilate's question, what is truth? Think about that. Let's read on. Pilate said to him, once again, what is truth? And after he said to this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to re release to you the king of the Jews? And they cried out, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Um... And this is crazy, if y'all think about it. Pilate, a very worldly man, all right? He's, he's a governor in Rome, so this guy definitely identified with the Romans and a lot of their practices. You should read about this. Um, but he finds Christ innocent, even after Christ says, I'm a king, which is actually a threat to Rome. And so 
if anything, Pilate should be very, very ticked off at this and want to get rid of him immediately, but he finds that he's innocent. Um, and then you would think that the Jews would listen to Pilate because Pilate had just given them anywhere from 500 to 1,000 soldiers to go arrest Christ in the garden. But uh, they're like, nah, we're not going to listen to you. He's guilty. He, get rid of him anyways. Uh, they, didn't listen. they didn't listen to Pilate or Christ's testimony. Um, man, there we go. Uh, we'll just keep it there. That's fine. Uh, I also wonder why they chose Barabbas. We find out that Barabbas was a robber. Uh, some of your translations might say that he was a murderer. Others will say that he led a rebellion. Um, and what had, Christ, what had Christ done? Healed their sick? Raised the dead? Turned water into really good wine? Uh, I don't know. Tell people to love their neighbor? To be generous? Those sound like good things. Yeah, let's kill that guy. Uh, Yeah, but why do they do this? Think about it. Why do they do it? Why did they reject Christ's testimony and Pilate's testimony of Christ? Why would they choose a known robber, a murderer, a rebellion leader over Christ? And I think this question is still very relevant today. Why do we choose the ways of him who kills, steals, and destroys the very one who leads rebellion instead of Christ? Why do we choose him over Christ? Ultimately, I think it's because we don't really believe. It's because I don't really believe. It's because you don't really believe. Do we really believe? I mean, Christ, he's the fulfillment of the Old Testament. The Jews, they knew the Old Testament. There are hundreds and hundreds of verses that I could give you that are leading up to this point and everything that Christ is doing is fulfilling the word. Like, if anything, they should recognize it and they should believe. If anything, you should look around in your lives and you can, should see what God is doing in the lives of people among us and believe. We talked about that in our family group. It's like, how do we not forget? Like, how do we not drift away? I invite you guys this morning, and I am always inviting and challenging our Bind students to, uh, to come see and believe and to really, I don't know, just be honest with them. And I want to be honest with you guys. It doesn't do any good to be eloquent and have a bunch of fluff if there's not love in this. And I hope you guys can feel my love for you in this. Um, but as we come and see and believe, I think it's important to ask these three questions. Whom do you seek? Are you a witness for or against Jesus? And what is truth? And I think that ultimately when we go back to that first question, like all of us, no matter what we're doing, whether, whether we're, we're caught in, in an addiction or like just bound up in porn and lust or stuck in video games or just seeking like the next level of our job or, or whatever it is, like seeking fulfillment from other people, like all of us in those moments, we are actually searching and seeking for I am. Like, ultimately, when, if you were able to wipe away all that and remove the veils, like, the one thing that you truly ultimately need is I am. I am. Are you a witness for or against Jesus? Got to be asked that question. And I hope that you can say, yes, I am. And when we come back to truth, what is truth? Uh, Truth is truth. It doesn't matter how you feel about it any more than it matters how I feel about it raining outside or that the sky is blue. Like, truth is truth. And so we're going to move into a time of communion here. And uh, this is going to be a time that we're going to reflect on what Christ has done. On that time that he spent with his disciples right before this trans transpired and happened in his life. And it's a time for us to reflect. And it's a for time for us to look back. And it's a time for us to ask those questions like, who do we seek? You're here this morning for something. What are you seeking? Um, are you a witness for or against Christ? And what is truth? I want to just reflect on those. And we practice open communion here. And so um, if you are a non-believer or if you're not a witness for Christ, I, we ask that you not partake in communion. If you are and you need to repent, repent. It's okay. And we serve a, a gracious and merciful God. Um, 
the altar is also open for, for prayer. And if you need prayer, somebody will come and pray with you. Um, and so I'm going to pray and invite the servant team to come forth. And uh, we'll go from there. Father, um, help us. I ask that you just re remove the veil from our eyes, Lord. Let us not be so caught up in ourselves um, or trying to betray ourselves in such a way, but Lord, help us to be able to be honest. I know that's when you've moved mightily in my life is when I'm honest before you, even honest about my denials and my doubts and my fears. Um, because you come in and, and you fill us. You fill us with your love, your grace, and your mercy. And this is the reason why you came to set us free from this. So let us not hold back. Help us. And I pray that your spirit would just move and convict. Um, change us. Let us not be the same. Thank you. It's your name I pray in the name of Christ. Amen.